everybody, my name is Janelle Yancey, and I'm going to uh, use this uh, PowerPoint and uh, voiceover to talk a little bit about identifying neat retail cuts for 4-H and FFA. Um, I hope it's helpful for you, and uh, good luck. So when you're identifying retail cuts for uh, a judging contest, um, you know, there's, there's three different pieces are three different things you have to identify. First, you have to identify the species, um, whether it's beef, pork, or lamb, and we'll talk about how you can do that. Next, you have to identify where on the carcass it comes from, and that's called the primal cut, or sometimes it's called the wholesale cut. Um, and the thing about the primal cuts is this goes back to the way meat is actually cut up by a butcher. Um, different species are cut up different ways, and the different parts have different names. You know, what we call a round in beef is going to be called a ham in pork, um, and they're cut a little bit different places. Um, so they're different for each species, and it can be a little confusing um, if you come at it from a 4 h side where you're just looking at a retail cut and you're trying to memorize what, uh, what primal that comes from versus thinking about a butcher and how they cut it up um, and cutting retail cuts out of uh, out of a primal cut and cutting primal cuts out of a carcass. Um, so, and then the retail cut is what's usually sold to consumers. Um, and so a lot of times we think about, okay, well, that's going to be something one person could eat, like a ribeye steak or a pork chop. Um, but it may be something that several people eat, like a, a brisket or um, a rack of ribs or a pot roast. Um, but it's going to be something that's going to be sold to consumers. So it's going to be something... Um, that you may be able to go and buy in the grocery store or you might be able to purchase at a restaurant to eat. Um, so what I always tell students when they're doing this in a contest, you get points for each of these different um, things that you have to identify. You get a point for species, a point for primal, and a point for retail cuts or depending on whether it's 4-H or FFA or what contest you're doing it in, it may be three points, two points, one point, regardless you're going to get some credit for knowing some of it. So even if you don't know, you know, what the retail cut is, if you know that it's beef or you know that it's lamb and, and you think it comes from a certain part of the carcass, go ahead and answer that. Don't leave things blank um, just because you're not sure that you know. Okay, so the first thing you, we have to identify is the species. Um, and that's going to be beef, pork, or lamb. And what I like to... Uh, tell kids is, you know, you just think about it logically. Um, beef, those are going to be big. They're going to be big cuts that take up a, a big tray or a big plate. Um, and they're going to be a bright cherry red. Um, so if it's a great big cut, the bones are big, everything about it is big, you need to be thinking about beef. Pork is kind of medium size. And in my mind, pork always looks a little bit round. Um, it's also a really pink color. Um, sometimes pork cuts will actually have the skin left on. So if you see skin, you know that it's pork. And there are certain cuts that are going to be smoked from the pork carcass. Um, so if you see uh, something that's smoked that's kind of a brown color on the outside where it's been smoked, you know that's pork. We don't, um, in these contests, we don't have retail cuts that are smoked from any other species other than pork and we don't leave skin on anything other than pork um lamb is little it's little and cute you look at it you think oh that's such a cute little cut um, a lot of kids that do fortune ffa maybe they've never seen lamb other than in these contests and they look like little bitty beef cuts they're close to the same color maybe a little bit duller more brick red um and most lamb cuts in these contests have bone. Um, so if it's boneless, chances are it's not lamb. Um, and the bones are going to be little and cute. So the first thing we're going to talk about are our beef primal cuts. And these are the beef cuts that we have. Um, starting off with the back leg. The back leg. Um, all of these cuts that come out of here are called the round. Um, and then as you move forward in the carcass or anterior toward the head of the carcass, 
Um, all of these with the lumbar vertebrae and the sacral vertebrae, or a lot of them have sacral vertebrae, um, are the loin. A lot of those cuts actually have the word loin in them. Um, cuts with ribs in them come from the rib, or a lot of cuts with ribs. There's a few down here in the chuck that have ribs. The front shoulder, or the front leg is called the chuck um, instead of the shoulder, and that's kind of a, a term that we use specifically in beef. And then in between the front legs, there's this big cut that's great for barbecue. Um, it's the brisket. The bottom part of the ribs, the lower part, the long part of the ribs are called the plate. Um, there's uh, The skirt steak is also found in the plate. And then lastly is the flank steak, which is this, uh, or flank primal. And the only thing that comes from the flank primal is the flank steak. Now, in pork, uh, again, similar cuts, but not exactly the same. In pork, they call the back leg the ham. Um, for retail cut purposes, they, they combine ham and leg, so you can't mix that up. But it's not the round, it's the ham. Um, all of these cuts with vertebrae in them are going to be known as the loin. And then down here, um, the front end is the shoulder. And then where the bacon is found is called the side or the belly. So that's the ventral part of the, the lower part of the ribs and the flank together. So next is the lamb. Um, the lamb cuts are, uh, again, the leg. It's actually the same, same cut or same number as the ham and the pigs, um, but in lamb we call it the leg. Um, and if you'll notice, when the butcher cuts it, it's a lot further forward than it was in the ham or the round. And so there's some cuts that would be found in the loin of pigs and beef that are actually found in the leg of lamb because the butcher removes the leg way up here in front of the pelvic bone. Um, and then there's the loin, the rib or the rack, the shoulder, and in lamb, it's called the breast rather than the brisket. Um, a couple of other primals that you'll see used, um, and these are not specific to any specific to a uh, species. Um, there's various cuts that can come from anywhere on the carcass. And so those are going to be cuts like ground beef and sausage and beef for stew and hocks and shanks. Um, and then variety cuts are going to be organ meats um, like brains, kidney, liver, heart, oxtail. Those are things that are not going to be part of the carcass, but um, they're still consumed and they're still part of our retail cut identification. They're actually pretty easy um, and they're called variety meats. And so one mistake that I made when I was a student um, in FFA meat judging is I confused various and variety. And so you have to remember that various cuts come from anywhere on the carcass. They can be found on various places on the, from the carcass. And then variety are going to be your organ meats, your, your brains and kidney and, and offal. So it's, it's really hard to look at a cut of meat when, you've, when you're trying to learn this stuff and know, okay, is that from the round or the chuck or the rib or where is this from? And so what I like to tell students to start out as, uh, start out with is, okay, does it come from the front end? Does it come from the middle? Or does it come from the back end? And so cuts that come from the middle or from the front would be um, the chuck in beef or the shoulder in pork and lamb. Those cuts are going to have a whole lot of little muscles. Um, there's lots of different bones that are shaped different funny ways. Um, and if you're looking at cuts that come specifically from the arm, you'll have a situation where you have a round bone next to a round muscle. And when we get to those cuts, I'll show you what I mean. Um, and then from the back end, we'll skip over here to the back end, The uh, that would be from the round or from the ham and the leg. Um, those cuts are going to have big muscles and there's going to be fewer of them. There's not as many bones found in the round or the ham and the leg. Um, and so there's going to be the femur that's there and it's a great big round bone. And when you see that round bone and there's no round muscle close to it, then you know you're in the back end. Fewer big muscles, really big lean cuts come from the back end. Um, and then in the middle, uh, 
those are going to be cuts known as the rib and the loin and beef and lamb or they're going to be just the loin and pork um, those are going to be cuts where you see rib bones you see back bones um, a lot of times those cuts are really meant for one person um, a lot of times they'll call those the middle meats um, and they're really tasty really tender um, because that back those back muscles don't do a lot other than hold the carcass up so they're they don't get a lot of use so they're really tender um, and so you'll see one or two muscles that are not just huge and you know that you're probably in the middle now these there's always exceptions to all these rules but this is a good way to think okay am I on the front end am I in the middle or am I on the back end okay so starting off with beef you've got the chuck um, these are all cuts that come from the chuck primal and there's lots of little muscles you can see you know in these cuts there's lots of little muscles here so you know you're in the front end um, so we've got the blade roast um, which would be a you can see that flat blade blade bone in there there's sometimes some big old chunks of rib there too um, it might have part of the backbone in there too one that's specific to beef is the seven bone roast it's actually the same bone as the blade but it's there's a, a ridge on that bone you can see that ridge right here and that ridge comes up and makes this funny seven bone shape on in the cut where they cut it across the bone it makes that seven bone shape um, and so that's you also may see part of the backbone that's what these that's what this is is part of the backbone um, and again lots of little muscles now if you move on down they, they'll they'll actually turn the chuck and they'll start cutting it in a different direction and that's going to get the arm pot roasts and there's where you have the round bone next to the round muscle and you know you're in the front end and the in the chuck when you see a round bone next to a round muscle another thing that tells you you're in the in the chuck is you'll have this long skinny muscle that sits right here and so sometimes you'll see that arm bone that arm roast um you'll see it bone in or you might see it boneless well you can still see the round muscle of course the round bone is gone but you can also see that long skinny muscle and lots of little muscles that tells you you're in the chuck and um the round the round muscle tells you that's an arm pot roast so if you take those blade roasts um you take those apart um, there's some other smaller cuts that come out of the chuck um and one of those is going to be the chuck eye roast and there it's what it is uh, is the ribeye roasts that are up in the rib that muscle or that muscle group actually continues on down into the chuck um, and you can cut it out and make this chuck eye roast um, that comes out of the chuck and it's a really good inexpensive cut um, that that can be that's really tasty um, and so you can have a chuck eye roast or you can have a chuck eye steak and they kind of look like a ribeye they're usually a little smaller than a ribeye um, there's some extra muscles there um, but this chuck eye steak is just where they've sliced the chuck eye roast into steaks um, i think the chuck eye roast kind of looks like a big old loaf of bread um, and it's got kind of a ribeye looking uh, steak on one end um, and then the chuck eye steak looks like like a smaller ribeye um, the seven bone roast has another cut that's found in it um, that's really interesting and it's found within this ridge of the seven bone and it's a special muscle called the infraspinatus and it sits within that spine of the scapula or of that of that blade bone um, and there's two ways you can cut it so they can cut it out and and create these top blade stakes and they've got this big old hunk of connective tissue that runs down the middle um it's about the size of of you know a couple of snuff cans um or they can cut it a little bit differently um and they'll actually fillet this this big hunk of connective tissue out and they'll cut it crossways um, and that creates these flat iron stakes and one way you can see that you're looking at flat iron stakes you can still sometimes see little pieces of that connective tissue that's still there and you'll see that the fibers of those stakes run parallel with the direction of 
of the um, of the steak. So, and that's another. That's one that you just need to see some of them to kind of know what you're looking at. They're about an inch thick, um, but but the fibers run the length of the steak. Where you know, if you look at a ribeye or or a T-bone, you know, you're going to cut across the fibers. So a few more cuts that we find in the beef chuck. Um, there's the mock tender roast. I think it looks a little bit like a catfish. Um, it, it, and it's a bigger cut um, than the one below it down here. Um, the mock tender uh, roast, if you cut that into pieces, you get mock tender steaks. These are really bright red uh, cuts. And they've got this big hunk of connective tissue that kind of runs down the middle. Um, you can see that big chunk of connective tissue. It's really a rough textured steak. Um, it's going to be a bright red. It's usually really lean. And it looks a little bit like a tenderloin steak, which is why they call it the mock tender, because it's pretending to be the tender. Um, but if the butcher has cut them correctly, they should be cut a, a lot thinner than the tenderloin steaks. You know, filet mignon tenderloin steaks, they should be cut an inch and a half, almost two inches thick. They're going to be really good. Um, these steaks need to be cut less than an inch thick. Um, and then the petite tender is another one um, that's a lot smaller. This little guy is only about, you know, maybe an inch and a half, two inches at its widest point. It's, and uh, it, it's a lot smaller than the mock tender. I um, mean, it's a lot more tender too. The, fi the, par the fibers run parallel to the length of it. Um, you may see it trimmed or untrimmed. Um, and it's another one that you may just have to see to figure out what it is. Okay, up next is the beef brisket primal. There's only a few cuts that come from the beef brisket. Um, you know you're looking at the beef brisket because it's going to be kind of this pointed uh, cut. And it's got these the fat streaks that run um, diagonal across it. So you'll see this pointed shape and then you'll have the diagonal fat streaking that comes across it like that you also see this little pocket of fat that's over here across from the from the round part um so you can have a brisket whole boneless it's the whole brisket um that'd be something you'd you'd buy like to to smoke a brisket um or sometimes the butcher will just cut off the uh he will just cut off the flat half um and uh up here flat half and that would be the flat half they say flat half boneless um and then sometimes you'll see what they call a corned brisket um that's going to have those spices on it anytime you see a cut that's got spices on it you know that you're looking at a corned beef brisket because that's the only thing other than like a sausage that you're going to see with spices on it So, uh, moving on to the plate, there's only a couple of cuts that come from the plate, um, the beef plate primal. Um, the first is going to be the skirt steak, and that's actually the, the muscle that is the diaphragm that's found down here at the bottom of the rib cage. It's um, the muscle that's used to um, cause the lungs to inflate and deflate. Um, it is a long, skinny muscle. It's over, you know, it's over a foot long uh, lengthwise. And it has these um, streaks of fat or, or fibers that run the width of the steak, so they run the short direction. Um, and back in the 80s, women used to wear these wraparound skirts, and that's it. That's what it kind of looks like, this wraparound skirt that women used to wear. Um, another cut that comes from down here in the plate, so you got to remember you're down here in the, the lower part of the rib, um, are the short ribs. Um, the short ribs come from the plate, not the rib. They're just little sections of rib bone um, that are just the rib bones and a little bit of meat. Um, and those are short ribs, and they come from the plate. Another one that just has one cut, the primal that just has one cut, is the beef flank. The flank um, is looks a little bit like the skirt steak except for it's kind of pointed down here on one end and the streaks run the long direction 
Um, this cut actually sits on the outside of the carcass and so it takes some temperature abuse um, when, the, when they're um, spraying the carcass off with white water during the, during the harvest process. And so a lot of times you'll see some discoloration in this cut. Um, and it's the only cut you're going to see from the flank. Um, okay, so uh, moving on back up to the top of the carcass to the beef rib. Um, the first cut from the beef rib is the bone-in rib roast. Um, that's going to be like a standing rib roast that you'd make prime rib out of. Um, you'll see this. It might be a long cut. It might be uh, several ribs long, like seven or eight ribs, something that maybe a restaurant would purchase um, or you might have for like Christmas dinner if you're going to have a big Christmas dinner. Um, or it may be just a few inches long and just have like one or two ribs in it. Um, so you're going to look and see a ribeye steak in one end. Um, and then you might see a kind of a partial ribeye steak and some extra muscles in the other end. Um, you may even see a little bit of blade bone. Um, so you want to look at both ends if it's a great big cut. And you'll be able to see over here on this end, you'll be able to see the edges of the rib bones. They'll be along this, this edge over here. Um, these are going to be parts of the vertebrae. Um, that sit on this side, uh, so you know you're looking at a beef rib roast. Now, if you take that rib roast and you cut those extra muscles and extra fat away, all of this stuff, you cut all that away, cut all the bones off of it, and you just take this uh, good ribeye muscle out, you create a ribeye roast. Um, sometimes in the industry we'll call that a ribeye roll. It's a nice, neat little cut um, that's just the, just the tasty part of the beef rib. Um, and then they can cut that into steaks right here, one inch or even thicker if you like them that way. And that would be a rib eye steak. Um, you'll see that rib eye steak boneless. Um, if it's going to be boneless, you're not going to see any bone. And you're uh, you're probably not going to see, there might be just a tick of tail, but it shouldn't be very much tail. Uh, but the way you know you're looking at a ribeye steak, you're going to see that cat muscle. Um, and that's a pretty tasty muscle if you like to eat ribeye steaks. It's the spinalis. It's really tasty. Now, a cut that you can see bone in from the ribeye, which would really be cut from, from this bone in roast over here, would be the ribeye steak lip on. Um, it's lip on when that it's got this little bit of muscle down here on the lip, but it's also going to have these the bone or the rib bone on it as well. So they're, they're similar cuts. They're the same muscle, but one has the bone and that's going to be the ribeye steak lip on and one is ribeye steak boneless. So moving on into the beef loin. Um, so you're getting back into the lumbar vertebrae where the ribs are not attached anymore. Um, and so if you start up here close to where the ribs are, you're going to have several uh, cuts that are going to be the T-bone steak. <clears throat> and so that T-bone is actually the vertebrae. Um, and you can see it's kind of shaped like a T. Um, it's going to have a big side, which is the top loin side, and a small side, which is the tenderloin side. And there'll be several T-bones that, that come out of that loin. Um, maybe nine to as many as 12, depending on how you thick you cut them. Then the last handful of cuts of steaks that come out of this, this part of the loin, um, the, the uh, small part or the fillet is, is really big. So uh, you start out the fillet, the tenderloin is really small up here close to the rib cage, and it gets larger as you go back further in the carcass. And so when you're cutting off those last few, that uh, filet is really big. And you'll also see a little bit of this jump muscle. Um, and they call that a porterhouse steak. And it is it looks a lot like a T-bone steak. It'll fool you. You'll think you're looking at a T-bone steak. But if you see that jump muscle, then you know you're looking at a porterhouse steak. Um, and the, and the, if that tenderloin or that small side is really, really large, you need to go look for that jump muscle um, to see if you're looking at a porterhouse steak. Now, the rules about what's a T-bone and what's a porterhouse steak are a little bit different, whether you're talking about for restaurants purposes or for retail judging um, 
purposes for most retail cuts uh, contests, it has to have a jump muscle to be called a porterhouse steak. Uh, butchers and meat cutters and uh, folks in the meat business will tell you that the jump muscle doesn't matter. It's that the size of the tenderloin is what matters. They're both are not wrong, um, but for retail cut contests, look for that jump muscle. Um, so you take that beef loin and you break it down even further. Um, so we can look at this T-bone and you can break it down even further and you can have a top loin steak, which is the large side of the T-bone. Um, and that, that can come bone in. You'll see a little bitty piece of bone right there. Or more commonly, the top loin steak boneless would be boneless. Um, it, it kind of tapers off to one end down here. Um, you'll see, but it's going to be really, really lean. Um, and it's just one solid muscle. Now, over here on the tenderloin side, the smaller cut, you pull that off and you have tenderloin steaks. Um, you will, these cuts are not very big. They're maybe a little bit bigger than maybe your fist or like the size of a snuff can. Um, something to look for when you're looking at tenderloins is you're gonna see this little muscle. Um, sometimes I call it the friend. It's just a little muscle that's just right there with the tenderloin. It's the main muscle is called the psoas major and that little guy is called the psoas minor. Um, these tenderloin steaks should be cut thicker than cuts that look similar to it that come from either end of the carcass. We've already talked about the mock tender. Those should be cut thinner. The T-bones or the tenderloin steaks should be cut thicker. Um, and then there's a cut in the round that looks similar to it called the eye of round. It should be cut thinner. If you see it's cut thin, um, it's probably not a tenderloin. If you see it's cut thick, you need to be thinking tenderloin. Another thing about the tenderloin is they're going to be kind of dark in color. Um, and sometimes you may even, they may even be a little too dark for your taste. Um, the tenderloin roast is another one that you might see. Um, and again, the way I tell students is it's, you're, that fat is really lumpy and you need to look for that psoas minor, that little friend. Um, if it's the whole big tenderloin roast and it's really big, it's going to taper to a point down at one end. So if we move on further back, more posterior in the carcass, um, you get up on top of the pelvic bone and that's where you get into the top sirloin steak. Um, it sits on top of the pelvic bone, on top of the calf's hip. Um, this guy, this steak is, is boneless. Um, and what you're going to look for is there is this kind of funny shaped connective tissue that's usually found in this big muscle. So you're kind of looking for this funky shaped connective tissue. Um, when you're looking at a top loin steak, you're going to have this big muscle. And I think it looks a little bit like a razorback. You know, if this was its nose and this was its back and here's its tail over here. Kind of looks like a running razorback. Maybe that's just the razorback in me. And then you'll have this little extra muscle that sits right next to it. Okay, that muscle they call the mare's tail. Um, and if you think of, if it was a horse and the horse was running this direction, this would be her tail. Her tail would be flaring out behind her. And so it kind of looks like a horse's tail as she's running in the wind. Um, so that's how you know you're looking at a sirloin steak. You're going to be looking at, for that mare's tail. Now, because we've started cutting these in a little bit more dynamic ways, sometimes you'll see... Um, that top sirloin steak and they'll take it and they'll cut it into two further cuts so they could take the top part off they could just take the mare's tail and they'll have the top sirloin cap steak that's just the mare's tail part and this one's not a very big steak you know we're only talking about maybe two inches across and six or seven inches long um, it's really lean it's one that you know you're just gonna have to see a few of them to figure out what they look like um, so that's the top sirloin cap steak, or you can have the bottom part of it, which would be the top sirloin steak cap off, which is just the sirloin steak without the mare's tail. Um, and the way you know you're looking at it is you're going to kind of look for that funky shaped connective tissue that there's always going to be some connective tissue that's running in some kind of funky ways. 
down here in the bottom of that top sirloin steak. So that's how you know what you're looking at. If you kind of see, you can still kind of see that razorback shape. You know, there's the back of the hog. His legs would be down here. His tail would be over here. And that kind of looks like his nose. Maybe getting a little too creative for you there, but that's how I kind of look at him and say, oh, I think that looks like a top sirloin steak without the mare's tail. Okay, further down or a little bit on the on the bottom side of that loin, on the bottom side of the sirloin is going to be the tri-tip roast. And if you live on the west coast, this is one that you've been familiar with for a long time. And if you live in the middle of the country, this one's kind of a new one for us. Um, the tri-tip roast is cut down here at the bottom part of the sirloin. Still good cuts down there. Um, and uh, this tri-tip roast... I always think that it kind of looks like a mountain and you can kind of see that it looks like a mountain peak um, and you might even think about you know these might be ski slopes coming down off of that mountain sometimes it's really trimmed up like this is um, sometimes it's not uh, and you'll see that these these muscle fibers will all run to kind of a point at the top of the mountain um, Sometimes you'll see like silver skin or the connected tissue be trimmed off and sometimes it's not. Um, but even when it's not trimmed, you can still see those fibers running together to the point to a top of the mountain. Um, a lot of times you'll kind of have a fat side on one end and then you'll have kind of a skinny side on the other. So that's the tri-tip roast. Alright, so last but not, or last of the primal cuts in the beef round. Or the beef is the round. Um, the first one that we don't see very much in the retail store anymore, but you still will see a few of these in, in contests, is the round steak. And this cut, when it's really cut and laid out there for you, it is a monster cut. It's really, really big. We're talking, you know, almost a foot across wide, so like 12 inches wide. 14, 16 inches long. It is a big, big cut. Um, you'll know you're looking at the round steak when you see fewer large muscles. So you just see a handful of muscles here and they're big and they're lean. Um, you see a round bone, but you'll notice the round muscle that we saw in the chuck is not there. You just have the round bone. Um, you sometimes will see a round steak boneless. And when you know you're looking at the round steak, because there's the three distinct muscles that are found in the round steak. There's the top round, the bottom round, and this little friend is the eye of round. And you can see it's kind of an eye shape or a circular shape. Um, so if you see that with the round bone, you know you're looking at a round steak. When you see it without the round bone, you can still make out top round, bottom round, eye of round. So you know you're looking at a round steak boneless. Um, so you can take those three muscles from the round steak and turn them into three different cuts. Um, so you can have just the top round as a roast or a steak. Um, like I said, it's a big muscle. It's eight to 10 inches across. It's kind of an oval shape. Sometimes they'll dissect it right here and you'll kind of have a pointed shape, but it's big and lean and one solid muscle. And you can have it in a steak version or in a roast version. The difference between the two, a steak is going to be typically less than an inch. A roast is, should be more than two inches thick. The bottom round, I think is pretty easy to identify because it's a trapezoid shape. It's got two um, parallel sides that are, dis are not the same length and then these two sides that are not parallel that join them. So you've kind of got this trapezoid shape and that's going to be your bottom round. Sometimes um, they'll have, you see this little extra muscle, they'll leave that on and you'll have this little extra muscle down here. Um, and you'll see that as a bottom round roast or a bottom round steak. And then the eye of round 
is a nice little round muscle that's found back here. It's um, bright, bright red. You don't see the connective tissue like you see in the mock tender steak. Um, it's going to be a really perfectly round muscle. It doesn't have the extra little friend muscle like the tenderloin has. It should be cut less than an inch thick. You're not going to have, um, you know, a really thick eye round steak cut. Um, and so, and it's going to be a bright red, one continuous solid piece of muscle. Um, looks a little bit similar to the mock tender and the tenderloin, but there's ways you can tell them apart. And then the eye round roast has that round end, and then the fibers run really perfectly parallel to the length of this cut. Super, super lean um, cuts all three of these. Now continuing on down further in the beef round, um, if you take that bottom round roast and you continue down the leg, that muscle will start to taper as it gets further and further down the leg um, and it'll taper to a point. And so it's actually the same muscle as the bottom round roast, but instead of being, you know, having two nice even sides, it's got one side. It'll look like a bottom round roast on the side we can't see in this picture over here, have that shape. And, but then it will taper down here to a point um, on the other end because it's you're getting further down the leg um, and you're running out of meat. So that's the bottom round rump roast when it tapers. Um, the tip roast is another one. Um, these are actually three muscles that all come together. It's going to be, when it's a roast, it's going to be round and look like a ball. Um, not link a ball, but like a ball. It's going to be round like a ball. Super, super lean. Um, usually it's about the size of a volleyball, maybe as big as a basketball. Um, and they can, they can cut it into a steak and create a tip steak cap off. And um, it looks like a knuckle. So when I say it looks like a knuckle, if you look, if you make bend your finger and you look at the, at the bend in your finger, you know, it kind of looks like your knuckle. That's what they think, and they call this the knuckle a lot of times, but in uh, retail ID, we call it the tip roast cap off. Um, lastly, in the beef, we're going to talk about the various cuts. Um, so these are cuts that can be found anywhere on the carcass. Um, first of those is going to be ground beef, um, and it's going to be ground up meat, um, usually in a ball or in a package. Um, it is a darker red than pork. They're not going to show you ground lamb. Ground lamb is not an option. So if it's ground up and it's dark red, it's definitely ground beef. Beef for stew are going to be cuts of beef that are cut into little small one inch cubes. Um, that can be done with any cut on the carcass. Um, and then cube steaks are going to be steaks. Um, it could be cuts like those uh, round steaks that we call, saw a couple slides ago. And they put them through a tenderizer and create this... Um, tenderized look. Now some kids will get cube steaks mixed up with ground beef. Um, they're both beef, they're both various, but cube steaks are still intact um, and ground beef is actually you know gonna be kind of in a ball. So make sure you're not looking at a cube steak. Cube steaks are usually something, well both of them are things that you can find in the grocery store. A lot of times the ground beef will still kind of have those noodles where it's come through the grinder that you can still see. Um, and cube steaks kind of have a square look about them where they've been tenderized.